let's talk about magnesium for guys on TRT, hormone optimization. This is the TRT and hormone optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. This is the TRT and hormone optimization YouTube channel. And today we have as a guest back on the channel, Dr. Jeffrey Rutterbush. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thanks for having me again, Stephen. Good to be back. Pleasure. So let's dive right into the questions. Surely. Let's talk about magnesium for guys on TRT, hormone optimization. What are the benefits of taking magnesium for them? Well, I'm glad you're asking me that question, Stephen, because you know I'm, I'm quadruple boarded in nutrition and I'm an orthomolecular physician. So I have a lot of knowledge, so to speak, with magnesium in particular. But let me back up a little bit. The, the, the person I've learned the most from regarding magnesium is a Dr. Carolyn Dean, MD, medical doctor, and a ND, or naturopathic doctor. She's well known here in the States for being the guru, so to speak, because she's written uh, books and publishes articles on magnesium. And let me tell you something about, about the research that's coming out. In 2003, she came out with her first book called The Magnesium Miracle. And she mentioned there that magnesium is deeply involved with over 300 different chemical processes or enzymatic processes in the body. And, you know, I, I, I read this book 17 years ago and I learned a lot from it. But then she came out with her second edition uh, in 2017, the newest one. Too. So 14 years difference here, and it's doubled in volume. And now we know that magnesium is involved with over 800 different enzymatic processes, as, uh, as, especially as cofactors and so forth. So that is a significant increase and the magnitude and the importance of magnesium uh, in the body. So I think you had mentioned uh, you wanted to discuss uh, not just magnesium, but how I dose it, what I recommend, which form to take it in, and so forth. So let's delve right into that. Um, in orthomolecular mass, we, we learned that basically anything that cramps, most likely is due to a magnesium. It's kind of cramping, twitching going on in your body. Think magnesium first and foremost. So, rarely do physicians in conventional medicine measure magnesium. Uh, it's difficult to measure, it's not truly uh, easy to measure in serums. That's why conventional medicine, we don't usually look at it. I mean, people do. We'll get it sometime, but it's not a good reflection of, of true magnesium. To get a good reflection of magnesium, you have to do a red blood cell magnesium level. And Quest and LabCorp have these, um, but it has to be, I mean, true rep representation, mag uh, an RBC, a red blood cell uh, level of magnesium. So having said that, what is an optimum level? I mean, I do have people that, especially on this group, that are interested in orthomolecular mass and have, have uh, Facebook messaged me regarding, you know, what's the optimum level? So uh, Dr. Carolyn Dean, in her newest book, and you know, she's had many, many, many years, 40, 50 years of doing this, but she recommends anywhere between 6 and 6.5 milligrams per deciliter. So one caveat today, magnesium should be looked at through red blood cell levels and optimum levels, despite what the labs may say, is six to 6.5 milligrams per deciliter. That's magnesium optimization. Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of different ways to take magnesium. You know. You want to take the kind that's most bioavailable as far as being absorbed. So I recommend 
as per Dr. Dean and in my own practice, I recommend uh, magglycinate. Magcitrate is good. Magcitrate is also the, it's the least expensive. There's a product called Calm. It's a powder form and flavored. It's ionized magnesium citrate. It's a decent form. It does the trick. But the best form is a chelated magnesium glycinate. And I'll tell you why. I recommend magnesium in, in the evening in particular. Uh, anywhere from two to 400 milligrams on average. But sometimes I'll recommend four to 800 milligrams at nighttime. Why at nighttime? Magnesium is very, very calming, very relaxing. That's why it's the main ingredient in this product. Calm. So if you chelate it with glycine, glycine, is also a very relaxing, calming amino acid. Matter of fact, uh, Dr. Uh, John Chrysler used to tell me that he recommended glycine a lot in the evening, calm nerves and help with sleep. So magnesium I recommend during the evening before you go to bed. Uh, on average, I say 400 milligrams, whether it be calm, which is mag citrate, but I like the, the mag glycinate because the glycine was cleaved off also as to the calming, muscle relaxing, and therefore better night's sleep. If magnesium, along with, in my opinion, vitamin D, of course, and melatonin should be taken in the evening. And that's the trilogy, the three things I recommend for a great night's sleep. Magnesium glycinate, 400 milligrams, melatonin titrated to effect. Some people could only tolerate one milligram. Some people take 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 milligrams at night. Uh, and of course, I mentioned uh, the glycine being cleaved off that aids in sleep. So you have and, mag and vitamin D. We've, we've discussed vitamin D many times. And we know it's not a really vitamin, it's a pro-hormone. I recommend two to 4,000 IUs of vitamin D every night at, at a minimum dose. Most people take five to 10,000 IUs of vitamin D. Vitamin D is a difficult one, Steve, because people think that 10,000 IUs, that's a huge dose. Mm -hmm. It's not. 10,000 IUs is only 250 micrograms. Mm -hmm. People get taken aback by that huge 5,000, 10,000. But it's, it's a small microgram dose. So, in summary, magnesium glycate is my favorite. Like, mag citrate is decent in the ionized form. Uh, anywhere from two to 800 milligrams, I recommend 400 in the evening to help with sweet repose. Shakespearean for sleep. Right. Why do men on TRT need more magnesium than other men? Well, let's back up because remember, testosterone is an anabolic type of hormone. So it's going to ramp up a lot of enzymatic processing. And remember, I just said that magnesium is involved with over 800 of these different processes. So, you know, the average American, 80% of Americans are significantly insufficient or deficient in magnesium. So if you take, you know, men who go on testosterone, they're ramping up all these processes for muscle accretion. Well, they're going to burn through what little reserve of magnesium they have on board. So it's very, very helpful to get on magnesium first in my opinion. Um, uh, to get a good blood level of magnesium for two or three months before you get on testosterone. That helps to lay many of the anxieties that some men, men get when they're going on uh, testosterone. So I've been able to eliminate the 37% of men that have that MAOA SNP that predisposes them to anxieties. Remember, um, 
Dr. Rob Kaminarik mentioned in his book to he recommends magnesium and pregnenolone for those who have anxiety. But I I I just find out found out that in my practice, ramping up somebody's serum levels or RBC levels of magnesium prior to testosterone eliminates 90 plus percent of all those men who will have some anxiety problems on testosterone therapy. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now do this next. Click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization. It doesn't matter what you think!